I'm just going to talk about modes of experience today and how we can feel like um, we come and go, that we can lost our true nature <clears throat> or we've um, accepted a ticket into um, duality. But in fact, we can never lose what we are. It's just we have an experience of losing it. It's only ever this one thing experiencing. So um, we do have the option to remain neutral, to just remain as our unbound, formless awareness, our neutral. Self. So if we take a few moments to uh, almost walk backwards really from the mental realm of uh, feeling like we've got to get something, we've got to understand it, we've got to box and label it and be happy with it. Got that, great, move on. That's what the mental realm does. It wants to, um, you know, categorise it and fix it so it can move on to the next thing, the next thing. We can unplug from that realm. And it's only ever this, our true nature, having that experience. So we're just resting here as our true nature and we're unplugging from the mental, physical and emotional realm of uh, experience. So we're gonna walk backwards. So if there's any sense that you're in the head and you're experiencing, okay, what am I gonna get from this video? What, uh, what do I need to um, understand? It's just to see that we don't have to always be in that mode. It doesn't have to be center stage. That we can actually drop down out of feeling that we're located in the head. So we drop into this open view of being. So it might be resting back. It might be just recognizing, noticing the contact points of the body and the chair and the feet on the ground. It's just a sense of dropping this idea of a person, just allowing it to retreat, allowing it to reveal what's always there, this impersonal awareness, this unbound formless awareness prior to picking up the mind, body and emotions, the ideas and concepts of separation. You know, that's um, what's actually here. When we turn in, when awareness is aware of itself, and all of these are pointers and labels, really. So it's to feel in what's there for you. When you notice what's simply arising in this impersonal awareness. Are there just the contact points of the feet on the ground and the body in the chair? What's there when we peel back the labels, feet and ground and body and chair? Are there just sensations arising in awareness? Just like the sounds that are appearing in this awareness. You know, there's a melting away of the doer. We're just being, effortlessly being here now, noticing what's appearing in awareness. There may be thoughts, feelings, sounds, 
but they're all arising equally in this open impersonal awareness. There's a neutral space of being that's just aware of everything arising spontaneously. It's uncaused. Now this neutral open space of being is never changing. It's what's always been there. The ever changing can dance, but there's something that never changes. And you are the never changing. This impersonal you. This mode of experiencing can be um, can be in the can take form as lightly as wisdom and bliss. Bliss is the closest mode of experience to the absolute, which is attributeless. So bliss is like a ocean of sensing joy of manifestation, the um, flavor or perfume of life. being lived lightly in these expressions. And then there's wisdom, which is the pure potential for intelligence to spontaneously arise in the moment. It's not something we've learned, it's just something that's there. So these are the first two modes of experience that we can live lightly in the world, in these body-minds. And in this awareness, impersonal awareness, there's the invitation to separation, the I am separate ticket. And it comes in the way of um, a thought form in awareness. You are the awareness in which the thought form arrives. And the thought form only dances. You only have the experience of it if you pay attention to the thought form. If you remain neutral and open, the thought form is, a, is uh, presented. Um, and it's only if you accept that thought form as being personal that you have the experience of the thought form. And then we enter the mental realm and everything that comes with that invitation. So I am separate ticket. Um, I've lost my true nature, it comes and goes, is a thought form, completely neutral, until we pay attention to it and then we experience it in the thought form of mental activity. So it's just a suggestion. You can come and go. You can lose your true nature. It's a suggestion because you can't lose this, it's what you are. So there is a thought form wanting to take form, shape and pattern in awareness, 
in impersonal awareness. There's the invitation to have a personal experience, an experience of a separate self. And if you pick it up, then you have mental activity. Why can't I stay in my true nature if it's supposed to be there all the time? Mental activity. There's still this ever-present impersonal awareness, aware of the mental activity, aware of the invitations. But when we enter that mode of experience, that's the experience this unbound awareness has. So we've just plugged into the mental realm. And then with that, you get the emotional feelings of frustration and anger or um, sadness or unworthiness or whatever is being presented. Um, and then, you know, we feel very separate. We feel that this, we're a physical being, um, limited, and having this experience, that's all understandable because we've plugged in to that mode of being, to that way of experiencing on a mental, physical and emotional level. But we never leave this, so we can't come and go. And the way not to accept the ticket system or remain neutral, because that is the um, vibrational undercurrent of this impersonal being, is not invested in the separate self. So it's neutral. It doesn't see things as good and bad, and the contrast isn't here. So if you remain neutral, now you can't lose neutrality, but you can have the experience of losing it. So when I say remain, it's just to stay as what you are in your neutral, natural mode of being, and to witness these invitations, and to um, know that we don't have to pick them up. Um, and from here, the more we rest here, it's only the separate self that thinks that they have lost it. They just have, you know, it has this experience of being a separate self that's lost it, that goes backwards and forwards. Why can't I stay neutral? You know, all of that is just in that one invitation to separation. So this knows that it's just neutral. So you remain as neutrality when the tickets are, are um, presented, when the emotion may rise. Um, when the contraction of somebody not doing something you want them to do, the separate self, ticket. It's presented in those three modes of experiencing, but we can remain neutral. And it's quite magical when you remain neutral because it's just not entertained. It just doesn't have a chance to form. It's presented and it drops. So yeah, just share these, um, these five modes of experience and how if we remain neutral, we just stay in um, wisdom and bliss, um, just being. So there's no coming and going. There's no losing this. It's just an invitation to say that you've lost it. Um, I'm just waiting to see if anything else wants to be presented, wants to be expressed, because that's how in this fluid, open, unbound mode of experience of wisdom and bliss, that's how life unfolds, just in its natural unfolding expression spontaneous action, just being. So it's not that this being doesn't do anything and you're going to, you know, there'll be invitations of you can't rest there, you'll get nothing done. There is spontaneous action, but there is no doer. There is just doing. It's neutral and it's impersonal and um, it's effortless because there's no separate person efforting. No idea of a person efforting. Efforting. There is just 
effortless being, unfolding in the moment. So, yeah, these five modes are bliss, which is uh, fluid and wave-like. Then there is wisdom, which again is an ocean of being and knowing. No container of knowledge, just knowing. So nobody that's gathered all this information. There's no separate self. There is just intelligence, spontaneous knowing and wisdom. And then there is the option to experience separation via the other three modes of experience, which are the mental mode, the physical, and the emotional. And they are only um, accepted through this idea of a separate person, through this invitation to experience in that way. There's nothing wrong with experiencing separation. It's just it seems as though the truth is revealed. Um, the truth wants to be, let's feel into what's the right words here. You see how, how this plays out, because I knew that wasn't right. There was a knowing that those words aren't correct. So I'm just sitting with why would um, life decide to play its play unfiltered or lightly filtered in wisdom and bliss rather than the contracted idea of a separation? Why would life want to do that all of a sudden? Why would it choose not to play filtered? Why would it choose to play filtered? Because it can. Because life can just express in all those ways. But there does seem to be a pull to truth. Some expressions are pulled towards the truth of what's actually here, rather than the veiled um, experience. So I hope this explanation of the um, five modes of being, the Indian, Indian philosophy is the koshas. Um, and just this remaining neutral, um, if you can feel into that, to this ocean of being, to this impersonal awareness that is just, has pure potential to experience in all these modes because it can. Um, but you don't have to. If there is a intuition to pull to truth. So thanks for watching. Hope this helps.